Today we're diving into the fascinating world of entomology inspired wall art. Perfect for adding a pop of nature to any space without breaking the bank. Hello my sweets, it's Keisha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you for choosing to watch my video. Come let me show you how I created this stunning insect display using affordable materials. I'm going to start with this frame that I got from Dollar Tree in the plus section. I'm also going to be using this hazelnut Waverly chalk paint and eventually this uh, antique wax. I took the back out of the frame and next I'm going to go ahead and use this hazelnut chalk paint and just paint all around. I want to make sure that I get into all of the nooks and crannies that are in this frame and then I'm going to set it aside to dry. While the frame is drying, um, I'm going to start working on the, the backing. So what I have here is an image that I printed from Graphics Fairy, and I will be sure to have this linked uh, down below. Um, it is a free printable from their site. And then what I did was I went ahead and enlarged it because um, if I'm remembering correctly, this is about 12 by 8. So I enlarged this so that it would end up fitting inside of this frame. So to begin with, I would like to take this off of the back because I don't like how it hangs down below the frame. So I'm going to try first heating it up with my heat gun and see if I can't just easily pry this off. That's plan A. Don't have a plan B just yet, but if plan A doesn't work, then I will try to figure something else out. All right, so we got it off. I'm just gonna see if I can't get this cleaned up and then we're going to applying that printout. So I got the back cleaned up and then I took the sanding block and I just kind of smoothed it out a little bit. And for the front, I'm going to, typically I would try to remove this, but I don't think I'm going to this time, but I am going to remove the sticker first. And then I'm going to, because there are just a little bit of raised areas on this, so I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded uh, down just a little bit. It doesn't, I don't think that it needs to be like anything ex extensive just to kind of smooth down some of the raised areas that are on here. And then I'm going to give it a paint with uh, this Waverly uh, chalk paint in white. And um, once it's dry, I will be back to show you how I'm going to add the um, printout from the Graphics Fairy onto here. Okay, so I've gotten this piece painted white. Also took the time to go ahead and paint the back of it hazelnut while I had the hazelnut paint out. So now I'm going to affix this over onto the frame. And I'm going to be doing that with this Mod Podge. Now the purpose of uh, painting it was to not only disguise that image that was on the front, but also to make sure that this kind of doesn't darken up with um, applying it to just the dark background. So I'm just gonna spread some Mod Podge all over this backing and then place this image on top. You wanna make sure that you get all the way to the edges. Okay. So without being able to see exactly where I'm going with this, I'm just going to kind of try to line it up center and then just start from the middle. Get any wrinkles. 
kind of lift it back up. Typically, I would add another layer of Mod Podge on top at this point, but I found in projects prior to this, anytime I do that and I want to glue something on top, I found that I have issues later on down the line with adherence of whatever I'm gluing on top of the paper. So I'm going to wait to do that this time and then possibly come back around with the Mod Podge after the other portion of the project has been glued in. But now I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry and we're gonna continue on with the frame. Okay, so the frame is fully dry and I did two coats on here. So on the second coat, I came around and I, instead of just painting it on, I did do a stippling motion and um, did the second coat that way. I kind of wish I would have done it uh, like that on the first coat, but here we are. So now I have the um, antique, antiques, excuse me, antique wax, and all I'm gonna do is paint it on here, uh, trying to get into all of the crevices, and then I'm gonna wipe back the wipe, excuse me, wipe back the excess from the high points uh, and I'm hoping it will just leave the dark more dark colors in the crevice areas so I'm gonna do like this and then I'm gonna come in with a paper towel and then just kind of wipe that back leaving the dark mainly in the crevice areas and that'll just give this frame a little bit more depth. Okay, so this is what it's looking like closer up. And I will continue on doing this until I've gotten all the way around. Now that I've gotten this covered, I'm going to go ahead and set it aside to dry and move on to the next step. Now that this is dry, what I'm going to do is take this sanding block that I have here and just go downward along the side of the vacuum and that'll help cut this paper right off. Just going to take the smoother side of this uh, sanding block and go ahead and just clean up the edges a little bit and then done with this part so for this part of the video i'm going to be using this mold of a i think it's a stag stag beetle is what it's called um, i'm also going to be using the green color out of this intense chameleon powder by let's resin and then by Arteza, I have this like dark brown color that I'll be using also. So I'm going to get these opened up and get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, dark brown mica powder that I have here. I don't know if I mentioned in the last part that it's a uh, mica powder that I'm using. And I'm going to just go into the little bits at the end of the feet here and around the horn area and just fill those parts in. So you just want to take a little bit on your brush and put it in there. And you just want to make sure you come all the way up the sides. Okay, so I am finished with the parts that I wanted to do the brown color for the Arteza, which is A718 if you're interested. And some of the powder did get away from me um, into parts of the mold that I don't want it to be into. So it got into the um, areas here that I'm going to be doing with the other colors. So what I'm going to do is 
just take this wipe, baby wipe, and just simply wipe out the parts that I don't want that color to be. And then move on to the next color. So I think I've gotten most of what I'm gonna get, so I'm gonna go on to the next color, which is this gorgeous green chameleon powder. This is also a mica powder. And I'm just gonna go in like I did with the brown and make sure to come up the sides. So next what I have here is um, Tea Expert Plaster Powder, which is a 10 to three ratio. It's an eco-friendly water-based plaster that says you can be mold in three minutes. So that's what I'm gonna use um, instead of my mold today. Now, it's a 10 to three in grams, and this mold um, actually says on here that it takes 5.7 fluid ounces. Uh, I have no idea how to convert that, so basically I'm going to double a batch of this. So it's 100 grams of plaster is the example that they give to 30 grams of water. So I'm gonna do 200, excuse me, 200 grams of the plaster powder to 60 um, grams of water. And if that's not enough, then I will mix up some more. Um, if it's too much, then I'll find, uh, I'll use uh, the other mold to pour the excess in. So what I have here is the powder, some water, and then I have some black dye. Uh, pigment dye that actually came in the kit with this and um, I will put this in the uh, description box if you're interested in checking this product out for yourself there's all different kinds um, that you can get online so I've already pre measured out my 200 grams in this little container here and um, it says per the package to measure out the powder then uh, pour in the water and slowly mix until it's um, smooth and then add your pigment while you're mixing. So, and then I just have this little spatula here to scrape the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the water in. And this is my first time doing this, so I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna pour the water in and I'm gonna give this dye a shake. I'm gonna put in a couple of drops. And by a couple, and that's six. I'm gonna go ahead and use the stir stick that came in the kit and stir this. It says for 60 to 90 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I don't feel like this is gonna be, this is dark enough, so I'm gonna add some more. And there, I think I've added, I lost count, but I think it was in between 12 and 15 drops. I'm going to add uh, too much pigment because I don't know how that's going to affect the curing time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my mold. I'm just getting a wipe here. Set that aside. So here's my mold. And I'm going to go ahead and just pour it in. What I mixed didn't quite get into all the little, little feet here, so I'm just gonna mix up a tiny bit more. I'm gonna try to figure that out and then um, top this up, and then I will be back when it's cured. So it's been about an hour since I last, well, since I poured this, and things got a little wild in here uh, when I. <laughs> 
when I did that extra little amount that was needed. So it's no longer looking like a bug, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to um, demold this. I'm a little afraid because it looks like the legs are falling apart, but nonetheless, here we go. So I'm just gonna loosen, try to loosen it a little bit really carefully. Yep. There's one leg. Alright, so here we have <laughs> our bug. Um, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this up. The kit did come with some sandpaper and looks like it's two different grits, a 400 and then a 120. Um, so I'm gonna clean this up a bit and see if I can't glue these pieces back together. If not, then I will cast another one. So it's been a couple of days since the last clip and um, I just really needed to recover from what happened with this bug. I was really thrown off. Uh, so what I did was I went ahead and uh, cleaned up the pieces uh, of the beetle and then I glued it and taped it um, with some E6000. Then I came back around with some UV resin and I did the back sides and also along the, uh, of the legs, excuse me, the back sides of the legs where they broke. And then I also went ahead and did the rest of the legs to the extremities and um, around where the brakes were to hopefully give the beetle a little bit more strength. In the meanwhile, I decided, I thought, you know, maybe I did something wrong with uh, how I um, mixed it or poured it since it was my first time. So I went ahead and poured um, another one in white, just the plain water and the material. And as you can see here, uh, the legs broke off of that. I even waited overnight before I um, took off the mold and I, I'm, I'm thinking it's just because the legs are so thin um, and it's a water-based product, maybe I just needed to be a little bit more patient and wait the full 24 hours um, or maybe it's just that it's because the pieces are so small it's fragile so do bear that in mind. Um, also when I was pouring that I did have some extra and I poured these little ice cream cones and these came out just fine. So I'm thinking um, because those legs were thin, that was the issue uh, with pouring this beetle. So after I did all of that, I went ahead and painted the beetle um, in its entirety here with this truffle chalk paint because in my dismay of it breaking, um, I completely forgot to mention that all of the chameleon powder stayed in the mold on top of that. So um, this is probably, I probably should have just done it all white to begin with um, and saved myself some time. So uh, next I'm going to still apply the chameleon powders just because they're so, uh, the mica powders just because they're so pretty. And these bugs, despite the fact that they're bugs, they're so colorful and pretty and I just want to... Um, try to capture that. So I'm going to get set up for the next portion and I will be right back with you. So what I have here is a, a little cup 
And in this little cup, I've put the original powder that I used, just a little spoonful of the original powder that I used from Artiza A718, and a couple drops of 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to uh, take a little paintbrush here and just go over the little details of the legs and get that color back on that I wanted originally. So I'm gonna work on that and get those all completed. And then I will do the same, just a couple of drops of the alcohol with the green chameleon powder and do the body of the beetle as well. I don't know if the camera is picking it up. I'll bring it closer so you can see. It does add a little shimmer to the truffle chalk paint, and that's exactly what I'm looking for here. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing of me doing all of this, but I will um, come back during various parts of the painting process just so you can see the progression. I'm satisfied with the way that this is looking now, so I'm going to go ahead and start sealing it with this Mod Podge Ultra, which is a spray-on all-in-one glue and sealer, uh, indoor-outdoor, no brush, durable, non-tacky, multi-surface. So I'm going to start with this to just seal in the mica powder, because now that the alcohol has evaporated, the powder is just kind of sitting on the piece. So I'm going to give this a couple of sprays here just to get it started to seal in and then I'll get it completely sealed. While I was waiting for the sealer to dry, I took Art Alchemy Metallic Wax in the color Vintage Gold and added it to the details around the frame. This is not necessary but it does add another layer of dimension to the piece. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is um, use this Loctite power grip that I have. Um, this isn't necessary. Uh, you can use whatever glue you like if you choose to create the, recreate this uh, project. Um, it's just uh, another type of heavy duty glue that I have uh, from another project. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna squeeze some out on the back. And then I'm gonna use a craft stick to spread it out and then get it stuck down. Now I'm just going to put this in a position that I can center it. And I'm just going to set it down and then I think that's pretty centered. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm just going to take my ruler out here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I don't want to be looking at it on the wall and it's looking crazy every day. about centered that way. Okay. Just go up a little bit. Okay, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now I'm just gonna press it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to set this aside to dry. So the last thing I did was I went ahead and sealed the backing with this poly acrylic uh, that's water-based, or polyacrylic, excuse me, it's water-based. And the last thing, now that everything is dry, is to put it back together. Stay tuned to see the final results. And there you have it. Stunning entomology inspired wall art that's affordable as it is eye catching. Make it yours by using a bee, butterfly, or dragonfly. If bugs aren't your thing, there are tons of beautiful flowers or animals you can use instead. If you enjoyed my video, hit the like button and subscribe for more creative content. Until then, love, inspire, create. Love you, bye!